Welcome to the underwater world of the manatee. They seem so calm and peaceful, but their very survival depends on the hot springs of Florida. Manatee and man sharing the same space. Can we survive in their world with these fellow creatures as they raise calves, move to feeding grounds, all the while trying to survive the cold and avoid the ever-present propeller? A gentle giant surviving in a dangerous world. Be an insider in the creature world. That's the mission. The Krat Brothers. Dropped in remote regions to live with the creatures. Through their eyes. On their turf. By their rules. Be the creature. the southern reaches of North America on the Gulf Coast of the Florida Peninsula. Cruising on the surface, looking for a great creature cruising below. Chris, you see these dolphins? Dolphins? Where? Oh, they're coming this way. <laughs> Fantastic. See? Oh, there they are, up ahead in the front. <laughs> wow. There are at least seven dolphins here. Manatees and dolphins probably don't have much conflict. A dolphin eats fish, a carnivore of sorts. A manatee is an herbivore. But they must run into each other. These dolphins are part of the manatee's world. It'll be easier to keep up with the manatees. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that's who we're looking for, the manatees. We're making our way along the same path many manatees follow. We want to find out how the manatees, one of the most endangered mammals in all of North America, navigates this new world that faces them. A new world changed by a virtual human invasion of the sea. This gentle water creature rarely swims in quiet lagoons or along empty shorelines anymore. But they're still here surviving. And the manatee is one of the most easygoing, good-natured creatures on this entire planet. So we're going to see what life is like from the manatee's perspective. And there is no better place to answer this question than Crystal River, where hundreds and hundreds of manatees gather for the winter. 11.15 at the end of the first day, and we are exactly where we want to be. There's a good chance the manatees will be here, too, because it is cold. It's 31 degrees Fahrenheit out of here. The air is cold, the water's cold, and manatees can't survive in cold water. So during the cold snaps, they gather at hot springs, and that's what's bubbling up all around us. These hot springs abound on the Florida Peninsula, and it's only because of this hot water that manatees can survive this far north. Right now, these natural hot tubs are full of sleeping manatees. They're down there, and that's where we're going to be when they start waking up in the morning. Out of this world, the manatees, they're floating like creatures on the moon here. Oh, look at their face. <laughs> Unbelievable. I love it. These guys are so great. <laughs> so many manatees in one place. And what's bringing them here? All this warm water bubbling up from the hot springs down below. Check it out. Oh, it's so warm, like bath water, around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So it makes an aquatic refuge for them from the 60 degree Fahrenheit water that's all around us. 
<laughs> They're crowding and all trying to get as close as they can to the warmest water. Without this natural heating, the frigid winter water would kill them. These hot springs, this is why a winter population of 3,000 can make it in Florida. Whoa, there are a lot of manatees, and they kind of look like a herd of underwater elephants. Makes sense because manatees and elephants are closely related with a shared ancestor, Moritherium. And this creature lived on land and in water. Over the millions of years, elephants evolved as a creature that loves water, but spends most of its time on land. And manatees evolved as an aquatic specialist, but to this day, you can still see similarities between the two. Look at the toenails. On the end of the manatee's flippers, they look just like an elephant's. Plus, manatees and elephants share that same wrinkly gray skin with stiff hair sparsely strewn over their bodies. And neither have blubber. Manatees look blubbery, but they don't have the thick layers of fat like whales do to keep warm. They don't have thick coats of fur like fur seals either. So how are they surviving this cold water? Again, they have to depend on hot springs. <laughs> One thing that's definitely missing are those big elephant ears. But manatees do have ears. You can see tiny holes on the side of their head behind their eyeballs. Those are their ears. Their faces look totally different. The elephant trunk is the upper lip fused with the nose to create a highly developed lip that grabs. The manatee has a grabbing lip too. A lot pudgier and clumsier, but still prehensile lips. And both manatees and elephants almost always have a single calf. Martin. Martin a cap, leaving his mom heading this way. Really? <laughs> Is she wanting scratching? Yeah. Wow. I can't believe she's coming right up to me. What? You want me to scratch? How's that? <laughs> <laughs> she loves getting scratched. She, she's grabbing my arm, working it under her belly, pulling it down with my flipper as I scratch her belly. She jiggles to reposition my hand, <laughs> squeezing my hand down on her belly. She knows exactly where she wants to be scratched. Whoa. <laughs> oh, this is great. This calf is so cute. And every now and then, she makes that chirping, squeaking sound just to maintain contact to her mom, who's sleeping. She wants to check in on her now. Look, she's heading over. She is amazingly trusting with us here. And in a way, she may just be loving the break, getting rid of that cat for a while who's always nudging her and who wants to play with somebody, her. If not her, maybe us. <gasps> All right, here she comes again. Where's your mom? Huh, is she ignoring you? Sleeping away over there? Oh, she wants to play. This is great. This is great. All right, all right we're rolling. Yeah, let's barrel roll. Great idea. Up, up for a breath, and then down and roll. Barrel rolling with the manatees. Let's call you Barrel. <laughs> Chris is getting all this. wanting to play more. <laughs> what words can you use to describe the nature of the manatee? Gentle, peaceful, sweet, a little shy, 
They are the most good-natured animal I've ever met. And you can see it in their eyes. We say eyes are a window to a human soul. You can see how peaceful and gentle the manatee is. Oh, hidden behind mom, another calf. Taking a nap with his mother. And she is trying to conserve energy because she doesn't only have to keep warm, she has to produce milk for her calf. Mom and calf resting on the bottom. They've been down for about two minutes now. And one of the phenomenal things about manatees is how long they can hold their breath. Manatees breathe so much more efficiently than we do. We only use 10% of our lung capacity. A manatee uses 90% of the air in his lungs. Let's see how long I can go. Look at them, nose in the sand, snoozing away. When they're totally relaxed like this, a manatee can hold her breath for 20 minutes. Come on, Martin, hang in there. Only two minutes? I'm down here only two minutes and my lungs are screaming. That's it. Not even close. They are still down there. The managing nostril is a feature we haven't even gotten into. That nostril lid seals the nostril tight. The muscles contract to open the lid when the manatee surfaces to breathe, but then relaxes. The lid closes over and the manatee sinks to the bottom and can sleep in total relaxation. The calf is moving. Now the mother too. That's a lot of air. I can, I can really appreciate their lung rock now. <laughs> Blast the manatee breath. <laughs> What are they gonna hit us with next? For a slow-moving creature, these manatees are doing a lot of cool things. Oh yeah, Barrel is nursing. And Mom is comfortable to let us so near him at a vulnerable time. I don't believe it, nursing right in front of us. The nipple of the female manatee is right under the armpit. It's in a slightly different place, but just like humans, she has two nipples. And manatees almost always give birth to single calves, about 96% of the time. A new calf has to have a nursing session every hour. That warm milk is so critical to her survival because the calves are especially vulnerable to cold. So she needs the warm water of the springs and her warm mother's milk to survive. I'm starting to feel the cold too. Even in the warm water, it's hard for me to even get out right away. I'm getting cold, freezing. It's all about cold right now. Their lives are governed by cold. The pattern of the manatees in winter is basically this. Stay at the hot springs at night. Then, on a warm day, make your break through the estuary. Get something to eat, and then return before you get chilled. It's especially challenging for the mother and calves, because the calves are so much more vulnerable to cold. So mom is taking Barrel out there. She's going to move her right along. But they better get back here before they get hypothermia, they get sick, and could die. This tug of war between warm and cold is gonna run throughout this whole expedition. We have to go through it, and so do the manatees. It's the defining factor of being a manatee in winter. After five hours in the water, we were for raising. We had to get back to that sailboat. Martin, it's another cold morning. Yeah, it is cold. How you doing, man? Good. Let's get the generator. Yeah. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound too good. Say it again. <laughs> that was a close one. 
never thought we'd be so cold on a manatee expedition. I know. <laughs> you know. I always picture manatees, warm weather, sunshine, warm water. These are the tough times for the manatees. Oh no. That's not sounding good. We have not had trouble with this generator like that. If that generator fails, we're just gonna be cold. Oh. I don't believe it. How cold is it out here? No heat. <laughs> now we are in exactly the same positions as the manatees. We have to depend on the sun and the hot springs to keep us warm and alive. It's 29 degrees Fahrenheit out here, and that's gonna make getting into those soaking wetsuits brutal. <sighs> Our heat failed. Imagine if the hot springs failed. Outside the hot springs, the water temperature is 54 degrees. Manatees just can't survive in temperatures colder than 68 degrees Fahrenheit for very long. Otherwise, they die. So the hot springs are a lifeline for the manatees, allowing them to maintain their Florida range throughout the winter. Uh, the thing is, once we're in, it'll be nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> My toes are ice pops. Oh, that's better. Is that mine? Yeah, it's yours. But this might be yours. There's more than 40 degrees difference between the water and the air temperature. So the mist is just rolling off the water in clouds. On mornings like this, you don't want to be on the surface. You want to be under this steamy water. You want to get out here? Yeah, I'm just going to take a look below to see if Beryl and her mom are still around. <gasps> oh, yeah, there are some manatees. Tangled. around. Look at all these fish. Right behind the manatee's tail. Hundreds of bluegills and sheep's heads. Wow, look at them. Oh, I see. They're going for the algae on the manatee's back. Algae can grow very easily on the backs of these slow-moving creatures. Fortunately for them, the bluegills operate a cleaning service. It's a great deal for both creatures. The fish get a lot of food, and the manatee lose that cumbersome, itchy, uncomfortable algal growth. What's going on? It's not just the algae. They're picking at the scars. Scars. They all have scars. One with scratch marks down its back. You can tell everyone apart. One with a slash across its head. One with a tail split in half. One with a tail that looks like a glove. Unbelievable how virtually none of these manatees are unscathed. Who or what is maiming the manatees? Manatees, such peaceful creatures. But all of them, all of them are carrying battle scars. What about Barrel? At only nine months, she should look pretty good. Unscathed. Except, you see the divot in her tail. Even she's been injured. What's doing this? What are they facing in this fast-moving modern age?
To get the broader picture, we had to get out of the water and get a bird's eye view. Blade. That's what's maiming the manatees. About 80 manatees a year are killed by speeding boats in Florida. These slow moving creatures just can't get out of the way of these racing, slicing propellers. Made of metal and turning at hundreds of revolutions per minute. The real problem facing the manatee is they need coastal waterways to survive, and humans love to live on the water, to live there year-round, to have vacation homes, to go there for recreation. That's truly the problem. The manatees are in the way of what amounts to a human invasion of the coastline. People love manatees. Everybody wants to swim with manatees, see them in the wild, get up close and personal. This love for manatees is great because manatees having supporters, they need that. They need humans on their side. Today, there are more people here than there are manatees. So many people in the water could cause them to be disturbed. And human activity can drive the manatees away from these hot springs, sending them into the cold water where they will get sick and die. But if you ever swim with manatees, don't hassle them. Don't do anything that changes their behavior. Let them take the lead in any interaction. So, see those buoys down there? That sets up a manatee zone, a sanctuary. So people won't swim in there, disturb them, they can get the heat they need, and then leave when they want. Whoa, Chris, look at that concentration. There's so many manatees. Oh, yeah, I'd say more than 50, maybe even 100. But they are not there for social reasons. They're just there to get the warmth coming from that hot water from deep inside the earth. So this is the new world. Let's get back down and see how they're dealing with it. They're like deer like that. Deer come right up onto people's lawns. It's true. Across streets, get hit by cars. And these canals are kind of like streets. Yeah. Chris, here they are. Up there behind us. Oh, I just saw barrel surface. We passed it. Which side? It's hard to follow a manatee because they move so slowly. I love the way they glide in formation. Just effortlessly. They're hardly even moving. Wow. Everyone's moving out to look for seagrass. She, she pulled it. it under. Yeah. That's just a piece of dried up old grass. 
It's not nutritious, but she is so hungry, she's got to taste it anyway. That is what is driving them to leave the hot springs, hunger. I hear Mama comes up for a breath. The steam's not only coming off the water, it's coming out of the manatees and nostrils. Wherever they're going, they're taking it nice and easy. Glide and breathe, glide and breathe. They're blending in now. Yeah. We're gonna have to use the manatee tracking technique, looking for footprints. When that tail kicks up, it leaves this wash, that wash right there on the surface, that round circle. So they were just moving to a new hot spring. Chris, she's headed right in there. Oh, uh, yeah. Right into the sanctuary. Because there's a hot spring in there. No people are allowed in there. No boats, no swimmers. It's just a place where the manatees can go and rest. So we'll hang out here on the outside of the manatee sanctuary buoy line, get in, and see what these manatees are up to at this spring. The water is a lot deeper here. I think this spring supports a lot more manatees. Uh-oh. That manatee on the bottom is a dead manatee. What got her? Chris and I had just arrived at a new spring. Everything seemed peaceful, but then. Oh, that manatee on the bottom. It's a dead manatee. What got her? Pollution, a chill, the water, a boat. Let me check her out. Just white and bloated, not moving at all. Wait a second. Wait, she's moving. She's alive. She was just sleeping upside down on the bottom. This is crazy. I was totally fooled. That manatee looks dead, but she's not. She faked us out. And if this manatee can keep tricking death, she can live to be roughly 60 years old. She's resting on the bottom, scraping her back and her head on the rocks, removing algae, barnacles, and parasites from her body. That's the natural way that manatees get rid of parasites, but now with the people around, they come right up to people to get scratched. Wow, first contact with an adult manatee. She'll take a good rub down, but I wonder if an adult will ever play like a calf, like Beryl. We've been so easily accepted into the winter community of the wild manatee. Whoa, look at this guy. Can you believe the girth on these manatees? They're about that wide wider than my reach. And it's almost all intestines. Most of that big round body are intestines, over 100 feet of intestine. This is a grazer's digestive system. Because they are eating grass, they have to eat a lot of it. Five to 10% of their body weight each day. And that means over 100 pounds of seagrass for a big manatee like this. Over the course of a year, a manatee's path looks something like this. Well, manatees are wanderers. A manatee can easily travel hundreds of miles up and down the Florida coast, even to the Caribbean. That all happens in the summer, though, when the water and the weather is warm and the manatees have no problems with the cold. But now, in the winter, they're limited in their movements. Our cormorant, look! Oh, yeah! <laughs> when the manatees come to the hot springs, they share their world with so many animals who live here. Pelican. We 
We've got a lot of fans here. The yeah. Pelicans love you. Yeah, that one right there. He's right on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> you ready, guys? The ones with the yellow heads are the mature pelicans. The ones with the brown heads are immature. And they know I don't have fish. <laughs> oh, wait a second. They know. <laughs> These fishing birds go wherever the fish are plentiful. And right now, there are a lot of fish hanging out with the manatees. One thing that makes this hot spring different from all the rest are the numbers of fish. Can you believe the schools here? It's phenomenal. There are so many fish. Crevel Jack, they are marauding predators whose hunting strategy is to school up and drive smaller schools of bait fish to the surface where they attack. Snook have a different hunting strategy. They are sitting way predators. They sit quietly until a fish passes in striking distance, and then they attack. Both fish are ocean-dwelling fish who have come into the brackish water for the warmth, just like the manatee. Moving through this underwater world at manatee speed, you can really notice and appreciate the other creatures who live here. A gar, a creature who's been around for millions of years, long before the manatee. She catches other fish with that long, tooth-filled mouth. Here is someone from an ancient lineage that survived so many environmental changes. A big snapping turtle laying in wait near the surface for passing prey. But the great blue heron may be a little too big. We had the good luck of landing ourselves right in the middle of a great blue heron rookery. And I love the way they fly. They look like prehistoric creatures. <laughs> They're flying all over the world of the manatees. The different heron pairs are making their nests. One heron flies off, down, screaming right down into the forest here, like some ancient pterodactyl. And then, in the woods, and finding a stick. Putting it in his reek, he flies off. Stick after stick after stick. Hands it off to its partner, who takes it in her beak. <laughs> in the nest, gets it just the way she likes it. And then the other partner's off for another one. And this way, they make a wonderful nest in which to lay eggs and hatch chicks. And one of these pairs has already gotten a great head start. They've already hatched a chick, a scrawny little chick. You can see the, uh, the bones, the feathers haven't even been developed yet in the wing. I've never seen so many great blue herons flying in one place. They could fly their way out of trouble, but manatees can't. Day nine, and the manatees definitely have something to show us. At first glance, people think of manatees as blobs floating in the water, but they have great ways of moving. They move along the bottom in all sorts of ways. They use those flippers like underwater arms, walking along the bottom. The two flipper hop. The manatee moonwalk. The one flipper hop. And then walking, flipper over flipper. And the swimming. Check it out. She can really move. That big tail is powered by strong abdominal and back muscles. With a few flicks of that tail, she can go 15 miles per hour. But even at top speed, they can't outswim speedboats. Except ours.
Because of the manatee's great vulnerability to damage from human activity, we chose the smallest boat and motor we could find. Wow, two big ones. <laughs> Amazing. Coast is clear, drop anchor. Oh, the manatee's going right under. Oh, oh yeah. There they go. Boat's drifting, are we loose? I don't know, I'll check. Look at that. <laughs> They're tugging on the anchor line. Manatees love to chew on ropes and anchor lines. Maybe it's just something to do, like chewing gum. Or maybe it stimulates digestion. Either way, this manatee is having a great time. I can't believe it. She's chewing on my fin. It's a different calf, somebody new. But this calf has a brother, sister, twins. I don't believe it. Twin manatees. That's so rare, less than 2% chance of finding them. And both are big and alive and doing well. Hey, see all those bumps and ridges on this little guy's face? Manatees have a skin condition that leaves their complexion looking a little wrinkly. OK, now where's the mother? Whoa, there she is. A huge, beautiful manatee. Wow, oh, he's going for the nipple. He looks hungry. The other one, too. This mother has her hands full, keeping two calves warm in the cold. <laughs> oh, she found Chris. Even though she has to take care of two calves, she seems to want to hang out with me. I don't believe it. She wants to play. This adult manatee actually wants to play. She's barrel rolling like a calf. This is unbelievable. Wow, she's a big manatee. The average manatee is about 10 feet, 1,100 pounds. The biggest are 13 feet and 3,500 pounds. She is a big one. Oh, she just rolls around while I scratch her. Wow, this is the way to clean off the algae. Her flipper doesn't really feel like such a flipper. I mean, I can feel the forearm and the elbow in there. It's really like an arm that has transformed into a flipper, but it's halfway there. You can still see the toes there, of course, too. Whoa, something scared him. Idle speed. And that's even tough to deal with. These boat repellers are so dangerous to the manatee. That is a terrifying experience. When that boat's right over your head, you can see the propeller coming towards you. Where do you go? You gotta get down. When your body is shaped like a manatee's body, there aren't quick down dives. You don't have the maneuverability of a sea lion. I know now why they get this. I can feel it. It's like a blade coming from above to chop you up. Shocking. We knew the manatee by day, but what about the manatee by night? To make that introduction, we needed a whole new set of gear. Actually, seen what a manatee does at night. 
So we're gonna go down there in the darkness and try to shed a little light on the other 12 hours of a manatee's day. You know, I wonder if there are more manatees at night or less. We gotta find out. Okay, so what time do they all start gathering so there are so many in the morning? Alligator. Hey, can they grab a cat from Mom? I don't know. What about sharks? These manatees are going out there, and there are some big sharks swimming off the Atlantic coast. A lot of manatee activity. I'm seeing footprints. Let's get down there. It's a completely different world down here, even more like the moon. What's that? Yes, the manatees are here. When we meet up, it's like running into each other accidentally. Oh, the scars glowing eerily white. The lights don't seem to be bothering them, but how are they getting around? What senses are they using? I can't see a thing without the light. <laughs> Manatee eyes aren't that great in the day. I mean, they can see underwater, above water they can't really see. They can distinguish blues from grays, but at night, are those eyes even functional? Do they do anything? And in murky water where there's a lot of algae or a lot of stuff in the water, I don't think they can really use their eyes to get around. At night, they have to rely on other senses. But which senses? One thing that helps the manatee get around in dark or murky water are the hairs all over its body. Each hair is a neurosensor that can sense pressure waves in the water, coming off currents, coming off objects in the water. It's an extended form of touch that works a lot like a cat's whiskers, except manatees have them all over their bodies. A cat's whiskers reach out on each side of the face, touching anything that the cat might bump into. About 2 a.m., we bumped into old friends, Mom and her calf barrel. Well, listen to her. She's squeaking like crazy, more now than ever. So much more than during the day. Sound and hearing have to be important to the manatee at night. We're hearing a lot of chirps down there, a lot of contact calls between Barrel and her mom. Those chirps become all important for keeping a mom and her calf together in the dark. And the hearing of the manatee through that little ear hole in the side of their head is also helped by a cheekbone, which can pick up vibrations because the cheekbone is attached to the ear bone, and that sends those sound waves to the ear so the manatee can hear and the mom and calf can stick together. Because if that calf got lost, that could be the end. It's so important for the mother and the calf to stick together and know where each other is. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. Over here. <laughs> so misty, I can't see anything. It's better underwater. Hey, the mom and twins. And look how close these two are sticking to her. They're not straying far either. Besides the increased chirping and sticking closer to their moms, the manatees don't seem to be doing anything different at night. But it has given us a chance to see the manatee in a whole new way with hair sensors and with great vocalizations. What a creature. We stayed with those manatees as long as we could take it. Oh, it's so cold. <laughs> I wonder what they're in the water. Wow. All this mist rising off the water is amazing. Yeah. It really shows how warm the water is compared to the air. Those springs right from the belly of the earth generating heat, bringing it up. <laughs> Without it, no manatees here. This little cove with the springs allows Barrel, her mom, and hundreds of manatees to survive. 
For millions of years, manatees cruised along shorelines a lot like this, and they swam through undisturbed waters. But now, the manatees are swimming through this new world. Humans have descended upon the manatees' coastal habitat, and we're not going away. But manatees don't have to disappear either. The first step to finding ways for humans and manatees to coexist is to understand the natural behavior, the needs, and the natural history of this amazing creature. When the manatee lifts its nose and eyes above water, it looks around at everything, nearsighted view, can't really see what's going on above the surface, and that's a part of the manatee's charm. It doesn't really know what's going on above the water. It's an animal that is just content doing what it's done, as long as the species has been around. There have been so many moments down there with the manatees in that otherworldly place that I'll never forget. People may call them dumb. People may call them slow. So what? That's what a manatee is. That's all they need to be. I've never felt so completely, utterly safe with a huge wild animal as with these gentle sea cows. But after two weeks, it's time for us to leave, sailing the same route the manatee will take in a few months as the cold waters of the Gulf begin to warm. Thank you.